Hey everyone, my name's Crystal with Vintage Booth Pro. Thank you so much for being here. Today I want to talk to you real quickly about what to do when you just don't have time to source. I know we're all very busy. Very few of us actually do this as full-time jobs. Um, I wish I could. I wish this was all I had to do. Um, but, you know, life gets in the way sometimes and you just don't have time to source. And that's one thing to think about and consider if you're looking to get into this sort of thing. You really have to be able to either set aside your Saturdays um, for sourcing, you know, going to thrift stores, going to yard sales, um, or you have to have time, you know, Saturday or Sunday, I should say, or you have to have time during the week. And um, that's been really tough um, with jobs and kids and that sort of thing for me. And um, let me know in the comments below, when do you source? Do you have a typical day that you source? Um, I try to sneak it in whenever I'm taking the kids somewhere. Like if I, um, you know, have to drop them off somewhere, I'll run to the thrift store if possible. And usually that's only at night. So not many thrift stores are open at night, which is not great for me. Um, so I've been really struggling with the sourcing side of it. So I I did go into my booth for the second time this month. I will share my uh, February update video where I really just kind of take out all my furniture and rearrange it. Um, but I haven't been back since then. And my store owner was like, where you been? You know, you gotta be in here. It's not in our contract, I don't think, but really it's recommended that we are in our booth at least once a week, refreshing and updating our space. And I highly, highly recommend that if you're not already doing that. Um, so I, just because life haven't, um, life gets in the way, I haven't been able to do that. So here is what I did instead. I did have a couple of new pieces that I brought in, um, but overall I kind of, looked at what my booth um, looked like before. Fortunately, I didn't get a picture, but I sold one of my big chairs. I, um, and there was just a lot of empty spaces. And so, you know, you kind of have to spread it out and make it look even. And as you know, I had sold some pictures too, I think on the wall. So I had to spread all that out. Um, but the first thing that I highly recommend is basically sourcing in your own booth. What can you take out, kind of reimagine and rebrand, if you will, and put back in? And I'll show you some examples of what, how I did that. Um, I did have a few minutes to stop in earlier this week and just remove some things that hadn't sold and have been um, kind of sitting lifeless in there for a little while. And I'm gonna show you how I updated those spaces, those items. So as an example, this five gallon water bottle, I think it's got a carboy with the orange attachment on top, has been sitting in my booth for years. I marked it high and have just been marking it down, marking it down. So what I, all I did was remove that orange carboy attachment. I think it, that's what it's called. I'm not really sure. Um, and just gave it a new life as a vase with some fake uh, plan in it and kind of made it a focal point in my spring update. And so we'll see if that makes a difference. So here's another example. This has been in my booth for a while and it kind of had a silver, um, silverish look before. So I took this along with several other pieces from my booth and just gave it a fresh coat of white paint. Did a little bit of distressing and I think it turned out great. So the second thing I did was just reimagine my displays. So I have a lot of Asian uh, blue and white um, chinoiserie type things. So I split those items up and just recreated displays. And you know, it makes such a difference whether you move things to the, from the left to the right of your booth, up, down, you know, whatever the case may be. When you move something, people will act like it's never been there before. It's shocking to me every time. Um, so in addition to taking a lot of the stale things out, um, just, you know, moving things from one place to another, I think makes a real Really huge difference and I'll show you here what um, I did so first of all I have several like brown um, MCM type pieces so I moved them on top of this MC ish looking dresser and you can see my walls are so very bare right now um, so I hope to fix that in the very near future here is one section where I moved some of the blue and white and Asian pieces and kind of mixed in some other pieces from around my booth. Um, and this is on the other side of my booth where I added the chinoiserie and some of the Asian pieces as well. So just totally split it all up. 
And then this is the very back wall, kind of a junk wall right now. I really need to update this space. And the last thing that I did that's so easy to do, and we should all be doing this, is creating vignettes um, on a regular basis because these are the things that are at the front of your booth that are kind of the focal points that keep people, that um, pull people into your booth. And so um, right now, since I took out Valentine's Day, finally, I was a little behind on that, um, I focused on spring and Easter. So I've had a few bunny things and I've started sprinkling in some um, spring type items, but I just really hopefully what I did was make those pop a little bit more and um, move some things around. So <laughs> I'll show you my vignettes that I created here. So it's so interesting as vintage booth owners, we're kind of caught between, are you a hoarder and constantly shopping and looking for items or um, do you just barely have enough for your booth? And I'm kind of trying really, really hard not to be a hoarder right now. Um, and I really can't because I don't have time to source. Um, so I kind of have to figure out my own sourcing strategy. Let me know in the comments, um, like I said before, when do you source? How do you do it? Do you set aside a special day every week? And do you have a great storage system? Because that is an incredibly important thing if you are always sourcing to be able to store those things without, without looking like it's taking over your house, which I have had happen to me before. So anyways, thanks so much for watching. And if you are not already a member of our Facebook community, head over to Facebook and um, it's called the Vintage Booth Pro Community. I post daily sales updates, but uh, some of the other 6,000 members of our group do as well. I hope to see you over there. And if you like videos like like this some antique booth tips i will share a playlist playlist of some other videos for you to continue watching thanks so much talk to you soon bye bye